My beloved people, during this past week, specifically on the Feast of the Epiphany, Almighty God asked our community of brothers and sisters to make its first offering. Our brother John died on the Feast of the Epiphany. Let us please pray for Brother John. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul rest in peace. May the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. I will not necessarily, I will not speak on Brother John. We spoke to him yesterday. But there's one thing that I do wish to point out this morning. And it is only this. You've heard it said that death is like a thief in the night. My beloved people, during that night, death touched this community like a thief in the night. Our Father Joseph, the night before, had taken, uh, rather, had, had, had placed brother in bed. He talked to brother, gave brother his blessing. That afternoon, really, he had uh, heard brother's confession and had brought Holy Communion to him. But that night he tucked him in bed, talked to him, blessed him, said good night to him. I will come to see you tomorrow morning. That was sometimes after nine o'clock that night. All seemed well. We all went to bed. We had no particular reason to be alarmed about anything, though brother had been ailing for two or three days, but nothing that we were concerned that much about. The next morning, at about quarter to four in the morning, Father Joseph went into his room to check on him. And brother was dead. Like a thief in the night. Which one of us, going to bed tonight or tomorrow night or the next night, knows for sure that he will see the following day? And yet, look at all of the monkey shines. that every one of us is guilty of as we travel through life doing this, doing that, doing the other. And we keep promising ourselves we will be here tomorrow morning 
to make sure that all of the things that I brought together to myself today will be here and that I will be able to arrange them nicely and neatly in the place that I have set apart to store them. Who can do that? Can I do that? Which one of you can do that? Death is the most sobering thought that we can bring to ourselves. It is no joke. Brother is gone. His place is vacated. We have a custom that for 30 days after any one of us dies, at his meal place at the table, we burn two candles for 30 days at every meal. And we set his place with the plate, glass, knife and fork, napkin, everything. A crucifix between the two candles. We also have a little receptacle with holy water in it. And we, re- we remove the normal, the normal receptacle of holy water. And each one goes to brother's place at the table as we enter the, ref- as the dining room or leave the dining room. Take a drop of holy water and make a sign of the cross for brother. These are the little things, the simple things, the unsophisticated things that we try to teach to those who come to us to be taught. And in this case this morning, the little things, the unsophisticated things that are normally, or should, uh, perhaps I should not say normally, but that are done. It should be normal, but in too many cases not. But those little things that are done in the holy families of Almighty God. Our life, my beloved people, is no joke. Today is a feast to the Holy Family. Before I forget, we will not have catechism this morning because of the disagreeable weather outside. Do not stay in it anymore, and you have to. And get out of it, get in your cars, and go home. It's not very often that you're told to go home from the pulpit. But today is the Feast of the Holy Family. One thing we do today on this feast, as so happens this year, up here is a little bowl with our usual blessed chalk. Please come up here after Mass. Take one, two, or three pieces, whatever you want, whatever you need, of blessed chalk, and go home and bless your homes. It's in the, the blessing and the ceremony is in last week's attached to last week's bulletin. You fathers, don't be ashamed and don't feel squeamish. Be men. Be the kind of a men, the kind of a man that Joseph was. Was pick up that chalk. Say the prayer. Lift up your hand, fathers. I repeat that. Lift up your hands, fathers. And bless your families. There is nothing better to be done than that. Leave all of the other stupidities, and as I said a moment ago, monkey shines. They were all so guilty of, put them in the garbage can, or a better place than that where you can flush them. And do your duties. Bless your families 
Bless your wives, bless your children, bless yourselves, and bring down the blessing of Almighty God upon everything you do. There is nothing left in this life that is important. We have this little pamphlet here, this little booklet. I recommend to you the, the, the wonders of the Holy Family. Please take one of these along with you and read it and study it. Read it and try to live it to the extent that you can. In today's bulletin, we have a short uh, description of the life of the Holy Family, St. Joseph specifically, the Blessed Mother specifically, and the baby Jesus specifically. I'd like very much for you to read that very carefully. Read it privately, publicly to your family. Meditate upon it. And do better than that. Please go to Nazareth. In fact, almost if possible. No, of course not. But at least in the, in, in, in the, in the supreme domain of your imagination, holy imagination, honest imagination, unsophisticated imagination, go to Nazareth and sit at the table at Nazareth together with Jesus and Mary and Joseph and try to see in your mind's eye a situation where there is Mary and Joseph and Jesus sitting between them and all three of them praying together and there you see Jesus praying to the very God that he himself was Can you imagine anything, anything at all, beloved people, more beautiful than that? Is it possible for anything more, be more beautiful than that to be on this earth? When you talk about the things that pertain to God, you have come into the vision of that which is beautiful, that which is magnificent and cannot be any better. And when we see and have to close our eyes to try to find that, and we are confronted with the scenery that we walk around in, in our normal ways of life, can we help but see how different, how very different we see. Here recently, I will not tell you exactly where nor how nor when, But someone approached us, and this is nothing for me or anybody for that matter, to think anything of for themselves. But at any rate, this person comes from a different uh, setup. We'll leave it at that. And this person said, in all honesty and sincerity, you people here do not talk the way we talk where I come from. I wonder what that person was thinking about. We don't choose to be that way particularly. But it's the way of God 
that we're struggling so hard to bring to your attention and to our own attention. And it is with the sincerity of purity and holiness and simplicity of mind and heart that we dare, holy people, that we dare to look up, that we dare to look up and look into the face of Almighty God. As I've said so many times to you, who on earth do you think you are? And who on earth do I think I am to even talk about it? We are not dealing with our next door neighbor or our boss at work or the man who sweeps the streets. We're dealing and thinking about him who first brought us here and keeps us here. We're dealing with a man, with, we're dealing with, with a one, with a being. Who is constantly telling us, just tell me that you love me. And then show me that you mean what you say and that you are struggling with sincerity to do just that little that, just that little that which true love requests of you. I ask for nothing more. And as your eye roams about and your mind wanders about, please rub away whatever is in your eyesight and look up. Dare to look up and see that the one who is talking to you and asking of you just this little bit, look at his face, look at his eyes, look closely. That's your God that's talking to you. In today's bulletin, a thought to remember is worth looking at, I think, I hope. And that as you look about and see this face we just spoke of, you can only see it, you can only hear it. I repeat and underline this. You can only hear it what he has to say, if you are at least a little bit, only just a little bit, not a great bit, just a tiny bit, surrounded with some semblance of silence. Why are we so afraid of silence? What is it about silence? that makes us run. What is it about silence? You get in the automobile, what's the first thing you do when you turn on the switch is to turn on the noise. Or better yet, just leave it on perpetually so that you won't have to go to the trouble and waste time turning on the switch because you might miss a bit. And when you go into your own homes, into your stores, into your work, into wherever you are, when you go pump gas in the filling station, when you pick up the telephone and ask to speak somebody, to speak to someone, noise, somebody playing some kind of wild music or telling you where you can find this, that, or the other. 
You cannot move away from it. And how much we look for that noise and how anxious we are to put it into our ears. Noise, 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 every place. And not a note that gives us nourishment. Not a note. And how addicted we are to that noise. That noise tears us apart from that which we must primarily be concerned about. Noise. I'm not on a bandwagon, a bandwagon of, of just talking this way. I am, my beloved people, I'm just plain scared. I tell you not to be afraid. Just let me be the one that's afraid. I'm the one to tell you to be strong, but I'm scared. And I have to give you that, or try to give you that which I myself do not have. I try to give you courage when I myself am a weakling. But I hope that I'm carrying the hand of God as I'm speaking to you. Don't look at me. Look at what you hear. There is nothing else that can give us peace except the name of Jesus. That's all there is, beloved people. We continue with our weekly instruction on prayer. My Father Graf, I always encourage you to read that. And I also encourage you, please, to keep all of these bulletins that have these sections on prayer in them. And when the series is finished, it's a long way off yet. A long way to go before we finish the book. To take these sections and bring them all together and make a little book of your own. So that you can go back and forth to it from here on out. And that it may be something that you will give your children. Beloved people, precious people, have you ever taken the time out courageously, courageously, courageously to contemplate that which is in all likelihood in store for your children and your grandchildren have you ever thought of that all of you myself are a bunch of old fogies they're not so I encourage you precious ones when you give to your children when you give to your children, please be sure you give them that which is true, that which is holy, that which is good. I must repeat this because, but I don't normally do it, and I am not making a saint out of anybody. In the church that we speak of today when somebody dies they have the mass of the resurrection so with them a saint has risen from the dead and has gone to heaven so let us pray to saint so and so isn't it strange my beloved people that we are or are we just simply insisting on being peculiar that's a possibility, but not a probability. Why do we insist on being peculiar, and instead of speaking of the mass of the resurrection, we stand up, or kneel down rather, and bow our heads and say, O oh Lord, have mercy on his soul. Eternal rest grant unto his soul. Over here they put him in heaven immediately. 
Sub Subito. Subito. In Italian, that means right away. Hurry up. Right now. And here we are, as peculiar as homemade sin. We pray for the dead. My beloved people, when I die, in the name of everything that is good and important to you, don't put me in heaven right away. Pray for me. Pray for me. If I can just get at least on the road that points in that direction. Oh, merciful heavens, how wonderful. That's life, beloved people. That's why we're here. And sometimes when we see ourselves walking, you, see, you, look, you look at the world today, and you look at faces today in the streets, faces everywhere, in the home, in the house, in the church, wherever. And you can see, if you look, you can read very much of what's going on inside that person's mind. Where God is present, where Jesus exists, that face can only reflect that beauty. If you don't see that beauty in that face, in that eye, I won't go any further. You cannot suppress the beauty that exists in that person. You cannot suppress it. It will come forth. In the other face, there is anger. There is frustration. That is, there is that look of, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Who are you to talk to me? Well, of course, the question, that question is valid. Who am I to talk? But just the same. That's where it is, beloved people. It's not a matter of foolishness. It's a matter of looking to God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And that woman, that woman who is placed right next to the throne, standing there, only second to God himself, a beautiful lady standing there beside that same throne. That's who I tell you to look at and to live with. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Holy Family. Go home today and bring the blessing that we dare and presume to suggest to you come to this point and pick up this bit of blessing and carry it home with you and next week when that blessing might be wearing a bit thin come back and get another bit of it and carry it home with you and live with happiness in your hearts and minds and soul. God bless you. I will bless your families. Please kneel.